So over here we have our T-Max breaker. Some assembly required. Main breaker, documentation, insulation back panels, terminals, jumpers, labels, hardware, and some miscellaneous plastic pieces, barriers, more documentation. All that has to go together to make a UL 489 compliant breaker. After assembling that, we'll move on with the under voltage release, which is in here. The auxiliary contacts, which is in here. And then in the other box that we got the motor operator, including the wiring harnesses, miscellaneous plastic pieces, documentation, and all that. Okay, first thing we'll do is put these jumpers on. Take the jumper, nut, screw, and the washer. Simple as that. First, you take this piece here, put it on the bus tab. You'll notice that there's a little lip on here. Make sure that lip is on the top. Down there. Put the bus bar on there. Kind of get the screw through. Just screw in the front. Tighten it down. NCS is going to be out there on the left. Put one down. Repeat for all four poles of the brake. Alright, there we have the jumpers all installed. And last but not least, take the divider here and just slide it in the middle. And you have a completed jumper assembly. Next stop, uh, we'll look at the terminals at the other end of the breaker. Okay, to assemble the lugs, just take a lug, take a screw, take a lock washer. Put it all together. There's your nut. Put the nut on the device with the little lip on the bottom of the bus bar. Okay, we have all the lugs on there, tighten down, there's the barrier, the barrier itself just slides right into place, just like that, they got two little wax screws, these will go in right here, the way to get to the hole you actually go one, two, three grooves over from the edge, if you have a drill, you can drill it. Or you can just put the screw in the place and try and screw it down. Hope you get the right orientation. Yes. You see, we have it protected on the bottom. Got the jumpers on top. These are our nuts here. And that is the basics of main components. Next we'll take a look at the under voltage release. Um, it came in this box here. And here are the various components. A wire harness. Connectors. Actually two connector pieces. We have the under voltage release itself and a couple of screws that came with it. 
or get the face off, first thing we need to do is put the paddle into the test mode, the little test button right here. And you can see the middle section, that's the tripped or test position. Just give that a push, watch your fingers. There you are. There's an open face. One, two, three, four screws. Next, you gotta take those screws off. piece here and just another little block piece and they actually fit together kind of just snap together and this and this will slide into this side on this side there okay that's the push it together push it into the front no lock in place here there's a little extra space there because when you mount this on the panel, the wires have to come out like that. For the four pole, we have to use this stuff here. And the X. Two on the bottom, and then the rest are like up here. Just like so. Let it slide this time. Not the easiest thing in the world. Manageable, I guess. Take the big screw. Game four, screw on the top, screw on the place there. Bottom alignment, hold. That's it. Don't over torque on these plastic pieces will break. Make sure these wires are in there nice and clean. Here we have our breaker with the UVR installed. Next we're going to install the aux contacts which go in this slot here. Uh, if we want to rotate it, check it at the right orientation. You can see the UVR is here, spare slot, aux contacts go here, harness and connector. The harness and connector will go in this side here, very similar to how the EVR harness is connected. They also have labels and you have, well that's a trash piece. They're going to work on the aux contact. So you can see, it's a spare uh, placeholder on the side. Take that out so we can fit our harness in there. The harness plug is here, just like on the other side. You just slide it in place, starting in the front. Working your way back to it clicks. You got ample room there to route the wires when it's finally installed. It's flat on the table here. Here's the aux contact device. When you put that right here, before I do, gotta pull this screw off. So we can take this little protective cover off. Pull it down and then out. This is inserted in this orientation here. You want to line up your connector. Contact device will sit in nice and deep. There's one set screw on it. You want to tighten down to keep it in position. Not very tight at all on that screw. Right here. After that's down in there, then you'll take that plastic piece, insert it, pull it up. It's kind of locked in place now. It's not going anywhere. Take care. Screw that I took out previously. Reinsert. We got wires on both sides. 
aux contact wires, and under voltage release. Okay, last but not least, we have the motor operator. We have them twice here assembled with the UVR, the aux contacts. With the motor operator, we have a bunch of miscellaneous hardware handle pieces, pieces for connectors, even this little tiny little thing. Just hold on to these things at the beginning. Also some labels. Keep the labels for later. Fixing hardware. Harness assembly. You notice that this one comes with a loose piece. You just simply insert this into the harness if you need it. Finally we come to the big guy itself. Here's the motor operator with its harness and it comes as one giant assembly from the back you can see the internal and it's gonna essentially mount right on there actually sorry not on there like that we'll do a few steps to get that done take the harness that the harness is installed. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the extra conductor in here. It'll slide in right over the UVR. Right into the same slots. Push it back until it clicks. You get your UVR and your motor operator wires on the left side. Make sure you put the faceplate on. on, wires in there. Next we have to put a bracket on the front. This is a middle bracket that will mount the motor operator. With the motor operator you've got long new screws for this mounting. They're longer than the ones I see in the unit, so you use the new screws, the longer screws. have it the other way like I had before. Your holes won't line up for the motor operator. So it like this. Okay, so we're going to tackle this but before we get this on there we got to pull the face plate off of this as well. Two screws. A screw that's easy to see on top. It's hiding behind the handle here. Two screws out. You need to use this. Don't forget that I forgot it the first time. And put it on the back of the unit. So we have a little knob here. Then that here. And then this is your open closing here. So you line this up the knob. Like this. That's all there is to it. Like I showed you earlier. Holds it on the clip here. And when you put the little e-clip on there, make sure you use a wrench or something as the best option. Otherwise, it will go flying and you'll lose it like I did. And then the gold screw holds it in place up here. And on the 
the back of the unit here you have a little lever right there that changes the off on position uh, indicator in the front in order for that thing to work and you actually need to place something in the small hole here just a little plastic piece that comes with it it's as simple as just placing that in the hole make sure you do that before you mount the motor operator onto the plate here Okay, now while we're working with the motor operator, there's a good chance that the spring would have been charged. You have to move the handle here to get the thing there. So you have to continue to move the handle until it's completely charged. See this lever will pop up like it is now. And you completely release the spring by pushing the on button. Uh, so once that's done, then you can place it on the device and line up your holes in the four corners. It's also worth noting on the hole in this corner too there's a small wire down in there that is dangerously close to that hole. Um, you want to make sure that that's free and clear. Motor operator, jumpers, conductors, UVR, box contacts, and we've got a fully operational breaker. Let's try it out. Charge springs. On discharge springs, and there we have fully assembled EDD breaker. And when it's all assembled, apply labels that come with the unit onto the side for wiring connections, ratings, and other things.